Hi there, I am Jamie Dunbar, and welcome back to the Dunbar Dog Diaries, The Puppy Next Door. This is week nine, video one. In our last session, which was week six, video six, we were working on desensitizing Daisy to a vacuum cleaner. We were able to make some good progress in that area, but unfortunately, after that, we haven't had much time to work with Daisy as we are getting ready for a special new project. Sadly, because of the other project we are working on, this is going to be our last session with Daisy for quite some time. But who knows what the future holds? Maybe we'll do another set of videos with Daisy at some point, but for now, this is going to be the season finale of the Dunbar Dog Diaries, The Puppy Next Door. However, you don't need to worry about Daisy's education because she recently enrolled in one of our in-person serious puppy training classes here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Speaking of which, if you are in the Bay Area and are interested in small in-person dog training classes, come check us out. You can see all of our locations and class schedules at SeriousPup.com. If you live elsewhere, then as usual, you can still enroll in our real-time live online puppy training classes at that same website, SeriousPup.com. These small online classes ensure you'll get lots of personal attention from one of our world-class dog training instructors who can guide you through any issues you have with your puppy, all without leaving the comfort of your own home. Alternatively, if you're interested in self-guided dog training courses, you should check out DunbarAcademy.com. We have hundreds of hours of dog training videos, lectures and seminars, as well as worksheets and eBooks, all of which can be purchased individually, or you can get access to all of it as part of our $20 Top Dog Academy subscription. If you are interested in either of these, we'll provide links to both in the description down below. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get back to this video. In this session, we are going to move our training out onto the driveway because Daisy has now had all of her shots. We don't need to worry about exposing her to germs. This will be our first attempt to train her out in the big world with all of its many distractions. Let's see how it goes. All right, here we are outside with Daisy in my driveway. We're out here because Daisy's completed her shots. And uh, so now she can go out and explore the world without risk of uh, contracting little puppy doggy diseases. Now, a lot of people, when their dog is able to go out for walks, they make the mistake of going out in the world um, too fast, too far, too quickly. They don't give their puppy enough time to adjust. So a really good exercise is to really just hang out for a little while uh, in your driveway or on your front stoop or on the sidewalk in front of your house and give your pup time to explore. You know, there's gonna be a lot of new and interesting scents and smells and sounds. You know, people are gonna be walking by, cars are gonna be driving by, all that sort of stuff. Um, and even if you've been taking your pup out and holding them, Daisy, come here. Daisy, come here. Even if you've been taking your pup out and you know, holding them and showing them new sights, it's a totally different experience for them being able to be on the ground and uh, explore. So we just wanna take our time. And I'm out here with a bunch of treats because I want to show her that even out here where it's very interesting, uh, it pays to come in and check on, in on me. Daisy, come here. Daisy, 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 look at this. Oh, oh yeah, so I've got some extra tasty kibble. I've got some uh, Zeewee Peak here. Plus, I've got her bully stick, which she just loves to chew on. And this is gonna be a nice thing to have out here because, uh, you know, in order to enjoy it, I'm gonna hold on to it. So she's gonna have to stay near me. She can go and she can explore and sniff, but if she wants to have some of this bully stick, she gotta come back here to me. Yeah, there goes a car, and here, you want a little treat? And a bully stick. And, you know, in the past few weeks, Daisy's gotten older, obviously, and um, she's starting to begin to turn into an adolescent. She's gonna get more reactive and uh, wary and anxious about things she hasn't seen before. And so I've got lots of treats here, here to help her make, make her feel uh, comfortable. And uh, if people walk by and she barks at them, I'm gonna try and get her attention back to me. You know, the first few times that might not work. She might be too excited and uh, too interested. And so when she does come back, I'll just give her some treats uh, and teach her that there's nothing to worry about. Yeah. We can do a little bit of obedience work here. And anytime you go to a new place, you gotta keep in mind that your reliability with your puppy is gonna drop a little bit, you know? You're in a new place, more distracting, and so 
Back in the studio, I'd be trying to do these things with an empty hand. Here, I'm breaking out the food right away, just to get some success, get her, you know, warmed up, because there's a lot of interesting stuff out here that we haven't had the chance to explore. Good girl, yeah, yeah, there you go. And, you know, another valuable thing is really just spending some time out here. Um, even if nothing much is happening, she's just realizing that, like, okay, this is nothing too special. You know, there's some different sights, some different sounds. Here you go, Daisy. And we can, of course, do some play out here. Cool. Yeah, Daisy. Good girl. You sit? Yes. Oh, yes. So as you can see, I've been asking her to sit and or down before playing, and so she knows when I hold the toy a certain way, the only way she's going to get the play back is by sitting or lying down. And uh, I've also started trying to do some stands for that as well, so we can actually work on getting her to listen to behavior cues. Thank you. Good girl. Yes. Down? Down. Good girl. Take it. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, here we are in this new environment, but Daisy's still excited to play with me. And that's what we want, because when we go out into the world and we start seeing unfamiliar dogs, we start seeing, you know, teenagers on skateboarders, we want to be able to get Daisy's attention back on us so that she's not, you know, uh, getting out of control and reactive with other things. Good girl. Oh, yeah. Did you hear something? Yeah. It's okay, Daisy. Here, you want a piece of kibble? Actually, no. Let's get something a little tastier. Now that we've got something interesting happening in the environment. Come here, Daisy. Daisy. Yeah, good girl. Thank you. Now, in order to teach the shush, the, the first part is really just luring your dog away from whatever they're barking at, getting their attention on you, and then keeping them quiet. And the best way to do that is hold a treat in front of their nose for them to sniff and lick, and you just hold it for longer and longer. And that way you, when you reward your pup, you're rewarding them for being quiet. Here, Daisy, yeah, that was a car. That was a car going by. You know, the other thing that happens with a lot of dogs, they're more reactive when they're on leash or they're behind a, a fence or something. So, you know, your dog might not bark at something if they're right next to it with no separation, but then you introduce a fence or you introduce a leash and they'll get more reactive. And so here we are outside a new area on a leash. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, she barks at someone who walks by. Haven't had any walk by yet, but we'll see. Good girl, Daisy. Daisy. Sit. It. Good girl. I'm trying to slowly get her following the hand signals, so I'm trying to lure now. Instead of holding my food treat like this to do the luring, sometimes I'm trying to hold the food treat in a flat palm so I can get a real clear hand signal. Daisy. Daisy. Ooh. There. There you go. There you go. Good. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I'll do some training here. But the other thing we can do, oh, in a new spot, is just have a little time settling down. You know, and I've got this bully stick. She's got something to work on. But this is a really great way to uh, take in the environment and give your pup time to get used to something. And once we get to where I feel pretty confident with uh, working with Daisy here in the driveway, um, and I feel like she's still pretty reliable, I can get her attention even if someone walks by, you know, that's where I might start walking up and down this block. And I just stay on the sidewalk, I wouldn't go far. That way she has plenty of time to get used to this and I can keep her under control before going farther. Yeah. All right, so now we're going to begin the process of taking Daisy for a walk. But we're not going to go far. We're just going to stay right in this driveway. And we're going to see if we can keep Daisy with us uh, using 
uh, lures and our voice and our body and toys with a leash really just as backup. And that's the way that you start so that uh, when you do start venturing a little farther afield, you actually have control over your dog without relying on the leash. So as you can see, there's a lot of interesting smells and stuff that we're working against here. So Daisy, look at this. Ooh. Oh, yes. But fortunately, our Daisy loves her tug. Oh, and we can use this to keep her with us. Ooh, yeah. I can even work on trying to get her into kind of healing position. Come here, come here. Yeah. By my side. But this is really nice because it keeps her from biting at my ankles, which is a issue that we have with Daisy. You can also try using a food lure. Oh, did you find something interesting in there? Yeah, I'm sure you did. Daisy, what do you think about this? Ooh, yes, that's a tasty treat. That's not regular kibble. Yeah, good girl. And Daisy, hit. Yeah, it's really nice. When you're walking, you can get your dog to sit. Good. Good way to reestablish control. Keep her right where we want her. And as you can see, this is what I was talking about in terms of, Daisy, come here. Come here. Daisy, come here. Daisy. Daisy, come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Good girl. Yes, I like how you came to me from the more exciting sidewalk where you can see down the street, you can see the trucks and the people, and you came to me, and I'm so much fun, right? So much fun. Thank you. Good girl, yeah, come on. And Daisy. Daisy. Oh my goodness, that fell out of my pouch. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on there. Get this back around my wrist. See if we can get this back. Daisy, come here. Thank you. Thank you for letting go. You can have it back if you want, Daisy. Come here. I've got another little bully stick type thing here. They're all wrapped around me. Okay, there we go. Fortunately, I've got two, so I can say, Daisy, thank you. Thank you. You can have this one. Yeah. You don't want that one? Take it. You're excited about this one now? Okay, Daisy, take it. Good girl. All right, do we have a new favorite item in the world? Or is it just because it's new? Thank you, good girl. Come here, come here. Yeah. So, as you can see, you know, we're just using this kind of as an extension of our training area. The walk, initially, it's not about covering a lot of ground. It's not about going far. It's about getting your dog to continue to behave just like they've, you've gotten them to behave at home in new locations. Daisy, down. Down. Good girl. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Okay, so that was a lot of fun. Our first real training session out in the real world, where Daisy was actually able to be on the ground and explore some of the exciting things in the environment. She was certainly distracted at times, but I think it went pretty well. Let's see what Kelly has to say about it. Hi, Kelly. It's good to see you. Hello. Good to see you too, Jamie. So we just watched what I think is going to be kind of the season finale for uh, this session of me working with Daisy. Um, I know Aww. I'm a little sad too, but it's been I love a lot of fun. Videos. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. And <laughs> I, I don't think I'm done working with Daisy, but we're gonna take a little break. Um, she actually recently just signed up for some of our in-person serious classes. So her okay. owners are taking her to class. She's meeting lots of puppies, getting lots of training. And as you know, we have an exciting new project in the works that we gotta concentrate on. I'm not gonna divulge too much about it just yet, but uh, suffice to say, <laughs> I'm not gonna work with Daisy for a few weeks, maybe a couple months. Um, and so this is going to be kind of like uh, a last episode for a while. But um, as you saw, it's been I was fun. Working... yeah, <laughs> it has been fun. I feel like I've learned a lot. Um, thanks in large part to you. So I really appreciate that. I uh, feel like I've learned a lot because it's been really fun. I mean, not that I haven't had students before. Obviously I have, but this is a little different because you're you're I don't know, you're following everything that you it's, it's more I don't know, it's more intensive and it's more 
direct information that you are following. I don't know, for some reason, it's, it's been refreshing to watch through your eyes um, and, and see where we could be more clear in our instruction at times, you know, how things are maybe interpreted by a novice. And um, so I feel like I've learned a lot too. Oh, good. And hopefully our viewers have also learned a lot. So hopefully it's just been a learning extravaganza. Mm -hmm. So in uh, this last episode, um, Daisy had gotten her shots uh, completed. Her immunizations are complete. And so she's allowed to go out in the world without risk of disease. So we took that first step and worked in the driveway. In part, um, my motivation for this was because I talked with them and they were very excited about the immunizations. They said they they took Daisy for a you know for a little walk around the neighborhood, and she, you know, was barking at other dogs and kind of got out of control. And so I was pointing out like, oh well, you don't you don't need to go so far initially. So I figured this would be a great uh, great episode to film what you can do just just right in front of your house. So yeah, yes. what do you think? Well, you, um, you did a great job. I will go into more detail about that in a minute. Um, I'm, I'm continue, continue to be awed and impressed um, by your handling skills and the rate of, of, of um, acceleration that your, your, your skill level has, has increased. Um, you're doing a good job. Thank you and so much. She's, a, she's been a good puppy in some ways, but she's also a little smaller and they're sassy and stuff. And, and you're harnessing that and using it to your advantage rather than fighting that. and. Um, and so it's, I like you know, that people can see that because everybody wants a calm puppy. Everybody wants a calm puppy. Mars, calm down, buddy. It's okay. Everybody wants a calm puppy. And, you know, you, you, your puppy's a living creature. It's a, it's a baby. It's a child. It's a teenager. You're like, they have energy. They have things, you know, um, they're, they're a different species. They have different, you know, things that they want to express, right? You know, and um I, you have, you're harnessing that is better than just always trying to tamp it down. I think it's important to respect the dog that you get, the personality and the breed type. So it's that's so you are doing a great job. Let me tell Mars to settle down here. But Mars, calm down. <laughs> Nobody, but not right now. So um, somebody's outside playing ball with another dog, and Mars is jealous. So let me let me tell him to be quiet. Sounds Buddy, good. I need to get um, so. Mars is not usually in here, but we, but we do our do this this bit of filming. Um, so, but I, I want to, I want people to know. That, one moment, please okay. talk to the audience for a moment while I do this. Okay, so you, you you've done a good job, and um, it's it's been wonderful to watch. Um, at the very beginning, you know, you talked about how. Daisy had just completed her, her vaccine. So we just spoke about that a minute ago and how they, you know, people are very eager to get their dogs out for walks. And this happens all the time. Um, I would argue, and maybe you did do some of this, but this sounds like maybe not, um, that the driveway moments should happen prior to vaccinations being completed. The point of the driveway is it's safe and it's something you can sanitize and clean or that you know is already clean. Uh, you live in a bit of an urban area, but you could spray that down, uh, you know, with some, Sanit you know, some sanitizing you know, sprays and um, have her out there. I would also argue that your driveway is probably not inhabited by a bunch of other strange dogs and that you know, she's pretty safe. So I would personally do that, that bit while they're still not able to go on walks. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think that that's something for, it's important because as soon as they can go on walks, people are going to take them on walks as you discovered. And you know, they need to have that you know, they, this is something they can be practicing in advance to, in preparation. You did do a great job at it. And again, we'll go into more detail about that, but it could be done sooner. And also, uh, I know you did do this, but I don't want to underestimate the, um, the importance of getting your puppies out in their bag or carrying them in your arms, arm socialization or in, you know, little uh, carry bags uh, as much as possible and going around your block and stuff that way. So they're just acclimated to the sounds of your neighborhood. You know, there's garbage trucks, there's construction, there's kids on bicycles, there's skateboards, there's, depending on where you are, you know, there's all sorts of things. So they can be acclimating to that even daily on a walk in your arms or in a, in a bag. Um, I have had some clients recently actually um, that were puppy class students that had a very large puppy. <laughs> and it was a Newfoundland puppy and, and, and uh, you know, they weren't going to be able to do the arm socialization even with the baby for much more than a few weeks and they they 
And they got a little wagon. I was going to ask. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And some towels on in the bottom just for traction and safety. It obviously still had a leash for safety or a harness. Oh. And um, wheeled that puppy around, literally. <laughs> and, um, so that, you know, you can get your puppy out in a safe environment. Also, when you go into stores, you put your puppy in the cart, again, towel down or something so they don't fall through. Yeah. And you definitely still need to hold on to them with the harness and so they don't leap off, but um, pet stores and Home Depot and stuff, you can do that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, just everybody remember, do that as early as you can with your puppy in small, um, oops, in small bits so that they aren't overwhelmed. But the frequent short bits is the best way to set, get them to think that you know, this is part of life. Um, that said, what you did, even though I would have done it earlier, was brilliant. And um, the fact that you did it a little later does bring in another layer of complexity, which I think is good for people to see, especially since we're, we're going to take a break for a while, uh, which is Daisy is becoming a little tween, if you will. And uh, she had the competing interests. You know, you were no longer her only focus, right? For weeks, you've been everything to her. And now she's like, oh, yeah, you're pretty cool. But what is that? Or look <laughs> at these smells. I want to smell this. And you're starting to get a little glimpse of what adolescence will look like. Um, so that was, I think, good for people to see. And that will absolutely happen, whether or not you've gone around the block 10 times, 20 yeah. times, once, and that will that will happen. So, and you want a dog that's you know, willing to explore and comfortable. It means that they're, you know, she's confident, she's curious. That's a good thing. But be that only hides behind your legs or stays right next to you might be a little nervous about the world. So she's, you know, she's obviously a, a confident, happy puppy, but... Um, you know, there was a little bit of competition there for her attention, and that will in absolutely increase as time goes on for a few months. It gets worse before it gets better. You know, everybody, um, people who follow a nice training program, puppy training program, and do everything early on that they they should, um, or have been told by their trainers, you know, end up going through a phase right around usually four and a half five months of age where they start patting themselves on the back and saying, look at this good dog. I'm such a great dog trainer. We've made it, you know? And then they start doing things like no longer crating the puppy or giving them way more freedom or taking them off leash at the park as soon as they can. And lo and behold, within just moments, it's gonna be adolescence, tween time and adolescent time. And it's the worst time to loosen up because your puppy is going to be less reliable in adolescence and make poor choices from a human standpoint, even from a dog standpoint, it's what adolescents do, right? They make poor choices. Um, and it's our job to protect them and, and, and uh, manage them through that. So it isn't a time to loosen up. And I, you know, Daisy has been very attentive and very good and she still was, but you can see that there's, there's, a, there's a beast around the corner. Um, so, so the last sniffing at the beginning, she was in the driveway. She was very um, distracted. I wouldn't say distracted. She was interested in other things. And I like that you just let her be for a while. You know, you didn't put any pressure on her to do anything really at first. Um, you let her sniff a little bit and, you know, occasionally check, had her check in with you. It's also a very good way to start a training session when you're in a new environment with almost all dogs. It's, it's, it's a rare dog that, or I should say it's less likely, it's not so rare, but it's, it's, it's way less likely that, th that there's a dog out there that is going to immediately just tune in and focus on you in a new environment. They want to check out the environment they, for their own safety, for their own curiosity. Like, why would they not? You know, we, we put them in cars and we, and we just drive somewhere. They have no clue. Are they going to the vet? Are they going around the corner? You know, what, what is going to happen there? And so they get somewhere and they, they want to check it out, especially if it's somewhere where other dog smells are, like a, like a park or something. Um, so let your dog kind of saturate on the environment a little bit. Let them acclimate. Give them a minute. Just sit still in the environment, in your driveway, on your block, um, anytime you take them somewhere new. And the more you take your dog out and the more places that become part of their regular routine and repertoire, the less you'll have to do that, right? You know, the fourth time you go to the same pet store, not going to be like, whoa, where am I? You know, even the second right. time, it's not going to be like that. So, you know, but if it's a new thing, uh, and and you can absolutely generalize novelty, that's harder to do. And by that, I mean, you can you can you can take a dog out so much that they just every day know there's a new adventure, and that becomes the norm. Um, you know, there you see that with homeless people's dogs. You know, people that are on the street, uh, their dogs are just used to being out and about. You see that with um, people like construction workers. 
They've seen it all for sure. They end up usually being pretty calm dogs. Um, not always, but usually. And, you know, people who like work construction sites and have their bunny dog with them or whatever it may be. These are dogs that maybe are out and about all the time. But generalizing novelty is one thing. And also some dogs are just more mellow and confident in, in general. But most dogs that they're only getting out occasionally or once a week or twice a week to a new place are going to want to really check it out. And for some dogs, that's a lifetime personality. Um, you know, some high end performance dogs can come out and work anywhere, anytime, but that's part of their makeup and that's part of how they've been trained from the beginning. I, you know, I trained some dogs to do some performance work and I have two that will come out and just lock on me and say, what are we doing? You know, um, and then I have a couple others that are like, wait a minute, where am I? And in the past, I've had dogs where if I'm going to a competition, I know that I need an extra half an hour prior to doing any work to let them pee in everything, sniff everything, read the pee mail in the neighborhood. Um, you know, it's not, so you have to, you have to kind of honor their, their interest in their own you know, environment. So it was good that you didn't ask too much, but then you did, you started asking for stuff and it took a minute, right? You didn't get that immediate response from Daisy. Um, but you did get it and you stuck with it. And that was really good to see. Uh, you don't call your dog once and, you know, when they're looking out or barking at something for the first time out in the street, I guess she, you, she heard something or she saw yeah, something. There, there was once where she was, she was barking at stuff and I didn't actually see what she was barking at. So I think it was pretty low level uh, distraction for mm -hmm. her. Um, or far away. Yeah. yeah I think noise. it was in a, in a house or a backyard or something. No. Yeah. So, but it caught her attention and she was maybe a little, and she was alert, like, right. You know, like, I mean, is she in danger? Is she just curious? You know, who knows what she thinks, but you know, she paused, you stayed with it. You didn't go, Oh, look, it didn't work. You know, throw up your hands and, you know, just give up. Um, and, and I see that a lot in, in classes and such people, you know, who have had good performance in the past or, you know, are just like, wow, I didn't work, you know, and just don't know how to handle that. But you have to stick with it and you have to find out how, what it takes. You have to work with that individual in front of you and say, well, how can I get their attention back? Or do they need a minute to sniff that? Or do I need to move them away from that a little bit? Or, you know, you try again and you don't just say their name over and over. Daisy, 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 if she were barking. That's not like, what is that? It's not in any kind of instructive guide and it's not even that interesting it's nagging at best you know and, and just ignore completely at, at worst so um you know you try what you can do Make noises oh whip out that good toy get that special treat you know and if you need to you can even like put your their a treat on their nose and turn them away and what you did with the turning away is is the right thing to do um, as long as they're not frightened and they're not in that you know, oh, I, I need to guard for myself mode. But, you know, you still, even in that case, you want to help your puppy and support them by saying, I'm here with you. I've got it. Let's move away together and get to a spot where you're comfortable and you know, it's going to be fine. Uh, she wasn't afraid in this case necessarily. She was curious, I think, but, but, a, but a little alert in a way that, you know, made her, um, you know, th she was concerned in a, in a mild way about what's happening somewhere else, right? Yeah. Is that fear? Kind of like is that a, curiosity? What's that? Where is the line? Mm -hmm. Do I have to look at this? Do I want to look at this or hear this? So um, it was good to see you follow through on that. And it didn't take that much, but you did bring up the big guns, um, which is absolutely the right thing to do. And the big guns for Daisy are? Her little tug carcass. She loves it so much. And then, and then also the bully stick. Yep. So again, you know your dog's hierarchy of, of, of rewards and enticements. And that's um, that's good to know as well. And then you were really well prepared. You had everything in your in your pouch. Um, impressed that you have bully stick with you. I, very few people would think of that. And um, I mean, the carcass is great. Um, you know, it's it's a great toy. You've mentioned before that you love. I mean, I'm glad that she loves it. But why do we love it? We love it because it's it doesn't unstuff, so they're not going to pick it apart and kill it. But also, it scrunches. Right? Yeah. You can shove that baby anywhere. Yeah, I definitely pocket. was thinking like, I'm going outside, gonna, I'm probably going to lose her attention at some point. And so I mm -hmm. wanted to have a variety of different levels of, of lures and rewards to get her back with me. And I thought it'd be good to have both 
you know, treats that you can give, edible chews. So, right, I just wanted to have it all. So I had all the options. And, you know, some people might say, why not just start with the highest level if you're considering, you know, that there might be some distraction. And I would argue that you want to work with the lowest level that works for most exercises so that you, your high level re reinforcement um, maintains its, its specialness, you know, maybe maintains high level status because it's unique and it's special. And also it does allow you to gauge your puppy's um, reaction, mm -hmm. right? If you use high, high, high level for everything, you might not see a reaction, a small like startle or, or something. They might be working through it and kind of blocked by their high value thing uh, and never even notice the world around them. And then you don't get to see what, you know, what level of comfort they're at at any given moment and um, as well. So uh, you do want to have a hierarchy and you do want to know it and you do want to have a few things up your sleeve or in your case, in your pouch, um, <laughs> training pouch. Yeah, I really like that idea that like, you know, you can, you can uh, quantify how distracting a thing is or how unsettling a thing is for your dog by like what level of lure you need to get them back on you like is this a kibble level distraction or is this a tug toy distraction or is this like the favorite bully stick in the world distraction oh i just can't do anything right now because i'm coping with right. something or i'm that interested in something you know um or i'm just you haven't figured out their their favorite thing yet there's a lot of you know ways to look at that but usually if a dog is responsive to their favorite their favorite toy or, or food item in in, in most scenarios because they are that meet your over threshold so these are all like litmus tests that you can take and by over threshold i mean you've gone too close to something or whatever it is is too scary or too exciting and you need to take a few steps back to where you can actually your puppy is able to focus because learning can't really happen inefficiently and some might say at all when someone is in an emotional state a highly aroused emotional state whether it's a good aroused state or, or, or a frightened bad you know aroused state that's not the time. So when you, you know, you're taking your kids to, I don't know, the beach, you know, uh, it's not the time to break out the, you know, the math flashcards, you know, I, and teach them a new, or teach them a new concept in quantum physics. You know, it's not, it's not the time they're, they're distracted or their favorite movie is on, you know, like, you know, why would yeah. you do that? Yeah. So um, until it's over or, or if there's at the doctor and they're maybe a little frightened about getting a shot or something, it's not the time to try to teach them a new lesson, um, even a fun lesson. You wouldn't be like, let's do a dance move. Well, they, they can't attend to it. They're, they're, they're concerned. So happy or sad or scared or bad is, you know, it's not the time you want to change the emotional state to a calm and focused state before you try to um, practice rehearse you know learned lessons or teach a new lesson so that's another reason for letting them acclimatize to an area before you ask for anything so overall great job um i think we got to see a lot in that a lot of um a lot of what real life training will look like for people yeah i know and part of me feels a little um a little sad that uh i feel like there it could we could have done some fun stuff over the next few weeks but we'll be back to daisy someday and um, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, I think I had so much fun so far. Uh, you know, you can, you can still meet with her once a week or once every couple of weeks and just, you know, do a, a check-in, you know, because training is ongoing and I want people to understand that you're absolutely not done just because, you know, they've done a puppy course. And like I said, this is almost the beginning, um, almost the beginning all over again. And then you might say, well, I do puppy foundation. Well, if you don't do puppy foundation, you, when you, when when the puppy poop hits the fan, you are not going to be prepared. You'll have no no recourse, no language, no rehearsed you know actions, and and you know dare I say that good fun training really enhances relationship as well. And if you don't have relationship, you don't have anything in training. So um, yeah. you do need puppy stuff, but then you do need to keep going. You know you don't just send your kids to kindergarten or or, or first grade and say, well, guess that's taken care of. You know it's a it's a process. You know, and so um, yeah, and actually, her the, I, in the in the past couple of weeks, I have done a couple training sessions with her without filming them. Like, you know, part of what um, what I don't think we're going to have time for in the next few weeks is the actual making of the videos because that adds a lot of time. But <laughs> I think I will have time to keep working with her, um, and that'll be fun too to be able to do some training without the camera rolling. Um, 
and you know just have some fun and less pressure uh might do some work with my my girls who have had a lot of fun working with daisy as well i feel like my older one is uh is definitely a budding dog trainer so we might have some sessions together I love it. and uh I I love might, it. might work with the neighbor yeah. the neighbor boys and see if i can get them uh get them you know get their chops their training handling skills up as well but, yeah excellent Excellent. Well, I hope to see Daisy more in the future. And it's been really a fun journey so far. And it was a great idea to do this. I hope, I hope everybody enjoyed it as much as I have. Well, thank you very, very much, Kelly. I really appreciate it. This has been so awesome for me. And I really appreciate you taking the time and all of the excellent advice. This has been wonderful. So thank you very much. And uh, thank you to everyone watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned some stuff and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Okay, so that was some great feedback. I think Kelly had a great point that I probably could have done this training session in the driveway before Daisy's immunizations were complete if I just took a few precautions to disinfect the area. If I had a private front yard or some other confined outdoor area where it's possible to see the sidewalk and the street, that would be perfect. And it would be good to start that sort of training earlier. But it sounds like Kelly was very happy with the training session in general. She liked how I gave Daisy time to acclimate, how when I called her to me, I didn't give up, and how I had a variety of items to use to lure and reward her. Well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and the other videos in this series. I certainly had a lot of fun working with Daisy, and I learned a lot, and I hope you did too. Something tells me I'll be working with Daisy again before too long, but for now, we've got some other exciting projects that we need to focus on, which we'll certainly tell you about as soon as they're ready. Until then, take care and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about dog training and behavior, make sure you visit DunbarAcademy.com to check out our selection of courses, many of which are completely free. If you'd rather watch more of our videos here on YouTube, just click the links to the right. And if you want to follow us on social media, everything you need is directly below. As always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to click the bell for notifications.